Hey guys, it's Cam Kane. Welcome back to the next episode of the Coaching Carousel Dynasty in NCAA football with the UConn Huskies so far. We had a rough, rough year, you know, end of the year 3-9. and nine. Um, We definitely turned it around on the defensive end towards the later of the year. You know, we started creating turnovers, started getting more sacks, started holding people, holding people to less points. But our offense just took a turn for the worst and couldn't score very many points. And that's that's what pretty much led to our 3-9 and nine record. But last time out you saw... Um, a bunch of teams at the top, 11 and 1, and a bunch of them were battling out in their conference championship games. So Texas A&M ended up beating Georgia in the SEC championship game that sends them to the national championship. And also Clemson ends up beating Miami in the ACC championship, sending them to the national championship. Miami having a lot of defensive players. Kevin Jones went in the first team all linebacker, middle linebacker. Let's go, boys. Kevin Jones, what a year he had dominating for us in the middle of the field yeah Shamel Lazarus freshman corner winning freshman all-america all-american <laughs> sorry so Texas A&M comes out on top and beats Clemson 42 to 35 in the national championship what a game that was but we do have a two-year contract and like I said we probably are going to stay here um unless just an offer just blows us out of the water like just completely blows us out of the water so let's go through and do all this Ooh, so we do get the defensive coordinator job at kent state we do get that offer but that's not nothing spectacular like i said we're only going to take something if it just blows us out of the water and uh kent state just that's nothing that blows us out of the water so we're going to decline that offer <laughs> and we get the offer of new mexico new mexico and um we're gonna <laughs> players leaving let's see if we have anybody trying to leave us all right, so Ryan Carroll is trying to go to Virginia for playing time. Persuasion chance is very low. Um, he's a young corner too, man. I really don't want to lose him. Um, we'll say pl we'll play in more than nine games. We'll see that and see if I don't feel like I'm part of the team. I need a fresh start. All right, well he's so he is going to leave. So one of our coaches is leaving. So our freshman wide receiver wants to leave because our coach is leaving, um, and his persuasion chance is very low. So, yep, and he's gone too. So we are, we are losing two players. All right, so we got transfer requests. We do have a wide receiver from UCLA. Oh, nice. Looks like he wants to come back home. 74 overall freshman. Let's go, boys. Charles Njoku. Not very fast, but he is tall. I like it. I like it. Six foot five. It'd be interesting. I mean, we had a lot of people interested with the interest in going to our school that nobody else is even going after. So hopefully, we get them with not much time on them. I went hard after two or three people. So uh, hopefully, we get some people. <laughs> like I said, this was a learning experience. So when when I am a head coach, we can figure it out how we should recruit and all that. But damn, so we end up losing that center and that athlete. But we got those big offensive linebackers. <laughs> Offensive linebacker, outside linebackers. Let's go. So we took that one outside linebacker from uh, Michigan. We got John Walker too. We lost the defensive tackle to Clemson, and we lost a lot of people, dude. Jeez. But we got our needs. We got our outside linebackers. So hopefully that definitely improves our defense going into the next year. So we end up 65th. Not too bad. Not too bad after a down year. You know we still get the 65th best, best class out of 116. I think is on this game. 116 teams. We get 65th, so that's not too bad, not too bad. You know, so it signed 17 recruits. Decent recruiting class, you know. Nothing too special, but nothing too uh, bad either, so. We get to see what athletes we want to put where, you know, what people we want to put where, what we see, what we need on offense and defense, so here we go. Tyler Coyle, up to a big 91 overall. What an offseason he had. Big plus six. Here, we'll, we'll go position by position so we can see it better. Budry, who got most of the starts during the year, did have a bigger upgrade than our freshman quarterback. Zergiotis, however you say it. We probably will start Budry at quarterback this year. Minza, our senior running back, got a big plus five. Xavier Scott got a big plus six. So we're not looking too bad on the offensive side of the ball so far. Two fullbacks we converted to fullback, got two big upgrades this year. All right, look at this sophomore, 72 overall, nice. And Garson, who was a defensive tackle, is now playing fullback. He is a monster back there. Um, and Joku, our transfer, 
didn't get a speed boost, man. Dang it. Only 79 speed. That's that's really that's that's one thing we are lacking on this team is speed. I think this next year in recruiting I might go heavy after speed. Our wide receiver core is looking pretty decent. Um, Dixon gets the big boost over Donaldson though, so I mean we got five 78 plus receivers now, so um, tight end Jay Rose got up to a 73. Our left tackle Tunstall up to a 72. Leon up to an 82, Hayes up to an 77, centers 79, 76, 74, 74. Ooh, we got two big plus sevens at the center spot. Cam DeGeorge, 86 overall now. So our offensive line is looking pretty decent, but here we go. Defensive side of the ball, Omar Fort, our senior who's going to convert to left end this year, gets a big boost to 81 overall. Um, I think since he's a senior, I think I might give Ugwok a red shirt this year. That might piss him off, but we're going to need him next year a lot more than we do this year because we got four. And then we got Dylan Harris making the switch to defensive end, getting a big plus five boost to an 85. So, yeah, I think I'm going to red shirt Ugwok this year. Definitely. <laughs> defensive tackles looking pretty good. You know, not nothing like our defensive ends, but. We got an 80, 78, 77, 77, you know, three good ones right there. They're all juniors. I might have to think about red shirt in one of them just so we have another one, you know, ready if case they stay. Uh, Gil Martin getting a plus five at left outside linebacker. Kevin Jones only getting a plus four. Even after being an All-American, only getting a plus four. That's surprising. But he's still only a junior. We still have another year with him, so... Um, Santana Sterling moving up a good plus five. TJ Gardner, 72. Herring Wilson getting a plus five. Shamel Lazarus, a big plus seven. A big plus seven. Plus seven awareness over there, too. Big, big, big wins on our corners right here. Let's see their press and man coverage now. Man coverage. Bunch of high 80s on a low 70 right there in Miles Bell. Um, press coverage 87 86 88 86 79 81 so press coverages are up too so and we only have one senior now so Herring Wilson's our only senior corner so they're all gonna get improvements again next year so should be better on the corners next year as well O'Neal Robinson and Messiah Turner are both getting plus fours nothing too great nothing too bad Tyler Coyle big 91 our main man at strong safety got a 99 awareness now hey definitely an improvement going into this season so we got to cut some players now we've got to cut seven people oh no well this shit quarterback we didn't even recruit or we might have I don't know or we'll cut him definitely go big after a quarterback this year because we're gonna lose our senior and we only got two sophomores so we'll probably have to get a quarterback I probably won't I'll just see if who I can who I can switch to fullback if we have a surplus somewhere so yeah I probably will cut him uh, offensive line definitely needed some cuts yeah this guy's shit that guy is shit this defensive tackles terrible all right we gotta make one more cut uh, that freshman outside linebacker is bad see our worst player left yeah he's our only 50 yeah we'll go ahead and cut him too all right here we go all right so we're going to open up the season at home against Northern Illinois. <clears throat> then we're going to go on the road at number nine, Mississippi State. Then we have a bye before our big rivalry game against UMass. And then we start conference play at UCF, number 16. And we're back at home against SMU, and then at Memphis, and then back at home against Army, and then at Old Dominion with a bye. And then we end the year with two home games against Houston and Rutgers. And then we're back on the road against Louisville and Cincinnati. So we're going to close out pretty tough in Louisville and Cincinnati. And we're going to open up pretty tough against Mississippi State. And then early on at UCF as well. So it should be a very interesting. I didn't make the schedule as hard as last year. Um, we only have three out-of-conference games. We have nine nine conference games. And then, so yeah, three out, three out-of-conference games. Plus, we will have a conference championship this year because we have enough teams. So that should be interesting. <laughs> but that'll be the schedule. We'll save the changes, and we'll get into the season. And um, But, yeah, I'll leave it there for this, but I'll have it in into week one for the next episode. So 
but I can't wait to start this season. I think we definitely improved. We're definitely definitely on the up and up after this after this off season. We definitely made some improvements get places. We got a couple big recruits for our defense, and uh, our offense improved. So hopefully that helps them out this year. So, um, but yeah, like always, like and subscribe if you like the video. And until next time, thanks for watching.